So I was one of uh, 10 people yesterday to be at this private investment meeting. I was with Joe Williams, co-founder of Keller Williams. We're all chatting about the investment world and how much it's changed, how much it's, you know, you know, where it's going, how to stay ahead of the curve, what investments are the best investments to be in. And I learned a lot. What I wanted to do was I wanted to bring that back to you guys and take, you know, give you some of my notes from the meeting. Number one. If you take a step back, right? If you take a step back and ignore your real estate license, you ignore everything that has to do with what you know as a realtor. And let's just talk as a business person for a second, okay? You're a business person. You're looking to focus on the real estate industry as a whole. And if we said to you, you're looking to build a million dollar company, you want to do a million dollars a year in sales in real estate as an example. You're not a real estate agent. Don't think from a real estate agent head for a second. I want you just to focus on just business. What we talked about was, if you're just looking strict business purpose, strict sales, what would you be looking for metrics wise that would catapult you to a very successful place as fast as possible? Now, let me kind of give you some granular ideas here. If you're in New Jersey and you're looking to sell real estate and make the most money possible with the least amount of effort, energy, complexity, what would you be doing? Well, you probably would be looking at a couple key markers. Where do the most sales happen? Where does the, you know, the average sales price probably the highest or a fairly high Price, uh, price per uh, per home or price per property. What asset class specifically in real estate would you be focusing on? Because you don't, again, don't think as a real estate agent for a second. What asset class, if you could sell any type of real estate, right? Because a real estate license allows you to do anything. What asset class would you focus on? Like if you just took a second and thought just strictly as, as a business owner would trying to get into a new industry, where would you have the most success? Where the most sales are happening at the highest prices the most frequently, where you could kind of find a niche within an area. We were even looking nationally. I mean, this this conversation was actually a national conversation saying if location and geographics didn't matter at all, and it was actually a zero percentage reason to do business. You know, you could sell property, you could buy property anywhere in the country, any type of asset class. What would you buy and why? Well, if we talk about it, we would probably be focusing on the most profitable types of real estate with the highest upside, the highest value add opportunity, right? With the biggest growth models, right? For the type of asset class that has the highest growth potential. You'd be looking in markets with unbelievable job growth, unbelievable population growth, low unemployment rates, great year over year growth when it comes to rentals, great over year over year growth when it comes to valuation of property. There's a lot of key metrics that you'd be focusing on nationally in order to make that decision. Take a second and think about it mentally because I want you to go back today and I want you to dive deep into the metrics of your market. Figure out exactly where the most sales are happening. Figure out exactly where you have the high, and, and I would find the five or 10 top, the most sales are happening, the highest price points, and what asset classes are selling the most of. Those three things are most important. Is it single family? Is it condos? Is it apartments? Is it whatever, right? Figure out what the heck it is. I don't care if it's commercial and you start looking into commercial and it's office buildings, apartments, warehouse space, you name it. I don't care what it is. So I want you to do the due diligence. I want you to run the numbers. I want you to find the data. Sell real residential, sell commercial. I don't care what you want to sell or what you're calling. And obviously there's a lot of people on here who work with me directly. I want you to do some numbers though. I want you to pay attention to this stuff. This is why we make our calls because I want to focus on what makes the most sense. Where's the most transactional volume and at the highest price points where where we can all not work so hard and make great money. The point that I'm trying to make is that you won't know where that is without knowing the data. That's one thing, one biggest takeaway, right? Know your data and focus on the markets and the metrics that allow you to scale with ease, allow you to grow with ease, because a lot of people forcefully try to do that. And the reason why you're forcefully trying to do that is because you're trying to make the most money possible in a asset class or a pillar of business, right? In a facet of the industry, uh, of the real estate industry that maybe isn't growing as fast as you think it is. That maybe has the least amount of opportunity, but you don't know the metrics. So you're just doing what everyone else is doing. So that's why this is really crucial to understand. Because by the way, really simple example, there are some areas in Monmouth County where there are somewhere between 10 and 30, okay? Transactions a year. And then there's some areas in Monmouth County that have 200 to 400 transactions a year. There's massively different markets. And what's fascinating is that if you could choose one market where you could probably become a decent percentage, right? If there's that much turnover in that type of market, wouldn't you want to focus in a higher turnover market than the, than the not? That's one question. What has the most transactional volume 
in what area? You're gonna look for transactional volume. And once you look at transactional volume, the next thing you're gonna look at is, okay, well, what, what 10 uh, cities have the highest transactional volume? Okay, well, it's boom, 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 boom. And then what you're gonna find out is like, okay, of these transactional volumes, which one has the highest price points? Okay, well, it's gonna be, you know, these, these are the top 10 price points. So now that you've figured out the highest transactional volume and the highest price points in those areas, now you get to say like, okay, well, I'm probably gonna have the highest opportunity, the best chance of making money in X, Y, and Z markets over other markets because there's more transactional volume and the prices are higher. It's simple math. It's simple data. But people don't pay attention to this because they just want to cold call anything. Oh, well, I live in this town, so I'm going to call in this town. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't scale. What scales is simple metrics, okay? So if you're paying attention to these metrics, you will be able to scale quicker, right? So that's this is that's all encapsulating the first point that, that I learned I wanted to talk about. The next point I want to talk about here is... The drastic difference one person in your life can make if they're the right person. What this means is uh, he, he was talking about how he had a few key connections, a few key people in his life that he's done hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business with. You know, again, this is with like two people. With two people, he did hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business. And I'm not talking in commissions, right? I'm talking worth of transactional deals that he bought and sold. So again, if you just even want to do get a small piece, right? Because he was actually buying the deals with the guy. If we're just talking even having a 2% piece, a two and a half percent piece, because you guys are doing the commissions on hundreds of millions of dollars worth of sales, we're still talking millions and millions of dollars. So he's just re reiterating the importance of, guys, get into rooms where you're talking to high level individuals. Get into rooms and lunches and dinners and coffee meetings more frequently than you think. Because even if you're meeting one or two people a week, even if you're meeting you know, a couple of people a month, I'm telling you, you're one person away from being a millionaire. More than the calls, okay? More than the phone calls, more importantly than the phone calls is meeting the right people. I was in a room last night in New York that, that the probably total value like, of net worth in that room, the value of that room was probably somewhere around $500 million. Total net worth of that room was probably somewhere around 500 million, 10 people. And uh, those rooms, yes, they're rare. It, they're not eons. They're not mile, you know, thousands of years down the road for you. They can be around the corner if you know the right people. And that room, right? Even if hypothetically, I only started doing business with one person in that room, that could be, you know, millions of dollars worth of transactional volume very quickly. I'm not even just saying, because like, we, we buy deals, right? So it's not just commissions, but even commissions, it could be millions of dollars in a short period of time. This is why I'm urging you, for all of you who basically think that you want to know, you, oh, I'm meeting people, oh, I'm networking. You're not really networking. You're not really meeting the right people. You're meeting people at like maybe... At at your gym or a coffee shop down the road, or you know, uh, you're speaking to your hair salon barber or whoever you're speaking to, right? Those people, I assure you, I'm not saying that they're the wrong people. What I'm saying to you is that I want to know the most successful person that they know. I want to like get in that room. Hey, like if I told you that you know I had a 20 million dollar deal in real estate, just curious, like who would you talk to first about the deal? Hey, you know, if I needed to raise capital, who would be the first person you thought of? Hey, blank, you know, like ask really powerful questions that get people to think you're going to want to be able to leverage the networks, right? Leverage networks where you're going to be able to jump into somebody else's network very easily because you already are friends of friends.